सच्चिदानंदय विश्वत्पत्ति हेतव तापत्रय विनाशा श्रीकृष्णा वैम नुम जन्मादयादितरतस्वस्वरा तेने ब्रह्म हृदय आदि कव मुह्यूर तेजो वारी मृदा यथा विनिम यो मृषा धामना स्वेन सदा निरस्तकुहक सत्यम परम धीम धर्म प्रोजित कैटवोत्र परमो निर्मत्सरा सता वेद्यम वास्तव वस्तु शिवदम तापत्रोन्मूल श्रीमद्भागवते महामुनिकृते किं वा परेश्वर सद्यो हृदयवरुद्यतेत्रकृति शुश्रूषुस्तक्षरा हरिओं ग्रीडिंग्स फ्रॉम क्लीवलैंड एंड अ जोयस New Year and Sankranti to all. When Bhagwan Rama was preparing to leave Ayodhya, then his parents were encouraging Bhagavati Sita to stay in Ayodhya, and she shared with them. I will experience more sukha being with Bhagwan Rama than staying in Ayodhya. Now, the implication of this is in Ayodhya there is the right context. It is a kingdom. There are palaces. She's a queen. In the Aranya, which means the jungle. There will be mosquitoes, and it will be hot and rainy and hard ground. But Bhagwan Rama will be there, so she's tuned into the content. For all of us, the content is what makes the context manageable, not the other way around. Remember last week when I was sharing with all of you. I was at an all-inclusive resort in Mexico, but my wife and I were happier when we arrived in Niagara Falls because we could focus much more on content, sleeping at the right time, exercising at the right time, and this very much relates to Shrimad Bhagavatam. Also, when Raja Parikshita found out that he had one week to live. For most of us, we'd go to palliative care. Correct? Am I saying that correctly? Where you you eventually go to a place where you're comfortable as you're going to die. Where did he go? He went to the Aranya. He went seeking satsanga. And he is not eating or drinking or sleeping. He's in satsanga. I feel all of us can relate to this. When we are in satsanga, we feel most at ease. You know, when you walked in here and you looked around at everyone, 
I hope you fell at ease, but there still may be an, uh, been a trace of, look at what that person's wearing, or I came late, or this person didn't invite me to a party. But now the main part of what we do on Sundays, which is our class, I think you feel more at ease. You're not looking at each other. I'm definitely not judging your clothing. <laughs> if anything, you're judging my clothing. <laughs> We're tuned into the content. Satsanga is this experience of the power of content over context. Keep being in satsang to realize this power. When I arrived in Cleveland on Friday, then I facilitated a satsang on, I'm distilling it, to ambition versus aspiration. Ambition versus aspiration. And one perspective on this, ambition helps you learn more about context and aspiration helps you learn more, learn more about content. When we are ambitious, it makes us more worldly. When we are aspirational, we become more reflective. To know more about your content, to know more about your spirit, requires an inspiring personality, an inspiring relationship. That which is inspiring makes you want to know more about your content yourself. And how this personality and relationship develops first is by the life of that person. And once you have faith in how their life is, you shift to their teachings. Life first, teachings next. Like, when people contact my wife for immigration services, sometimes they'll ask her about her qualifications. If you go to her website, see, I'm selling you on, on her services. <laughs> it shares that she's married and that she has two children because people can relate to that. Then they go for her services with immigration and so on. I have experienced this directly while living in the ashram. Going into the ashram, I would refer to my master as Swami Tejo Mayananda, but he was the first person I saw who was living with integrity, nobility, whose purpose was freedom. And once that faith was locked in, then I tuned into the teaching. And Bhagavan Krishna is endorsing the same to Rishi Uddhava. Throughout Srimad Bhagavatam, it has been about Bhagavan Krishna's life. But now Bhagavan Krishna's life is ending, as in his form is going to be dissolved. So he's focusing on the teachings now. The 11th section is potent in regards to teaching. And sharing all I've shared in a very simple way. When it comes to a subjective science, which is about one's in inner evolution, more important than what is who. Once the who is clear, the what can work. The last time we had gathered for Vedanta and Bhagavata was on Sunday, December 18th. Though that's less than a month ago. Do you remember what I taught? I don't see a lot of enthusiasm right now. <laughs> so I'm going to briefly review the nine chapters of the 10th, 11th section that we've covered. In chapter one, the main teaching is children do not listen. <laughs> <laughs> You're all thinking, we already know, we don't need to come here for that. But this is taken in a very extreme way 
that Bhagavan Krishna's own lineage didn't listen to him. And not listening to him is now going to be the cause of the destruction of his lineage. An implication for all of us. It naturally is to try your best when it comes to caring for people, but built into that must be acceptance. That every one of us, particularly our children, they've come with their own vasanas. You can't control those vasanas. In fact, when you accept them, you become a better caregiver. In chapters two through five, Two through five, we experienced upadesha. Upadesha means guidance or advice from the yogis. How many? Not 24. See, I told you people wouldn't remember. <laughs> Nine. It was the upadesha from the nava yogis. And the main thought here that was shared is love, Bhagavan. I was sharing with my wife and sharing with the, all the silence retreaters. My 15-year anniversary of studying and serving within Sanatana Dharma was yesterday. And so I was reflecting a lot about my time at the ashram, how I got there, what I was doing, what has happened since then. And the realization that I've come to is that the only true love is when you love Bhagavan. All other love is, I don't want to use the word tainted, but traced with ego. There's always the element of what do I get, even with one's guide. But with Bhagavan, that is the true love, where it's not tainted by what do I get. And until one loves Bhagavan, we will keep journeying. We will keep pursuing. But once you experience that true love, it is a most relieving experience. And I'm not just sharing this because I'm sharing it. I'm not just sharing it because of my own experience. Who asked for this advice? It was Bhagavan Krishna's parents. Bhagavan Krishna's parents asked, how do we stop loving him as our child and start loving him as Bhagavan? And then all of these teachings came in and then they did start to love him as Bhagavan and not just as their child. And they became free. Sri Vasudeva, Devi Devaki became free. In chapter six, the devas and devis, as in the semi-gods, had come to Bhagavan Krishna sharing, you have completed what we needed you to complete. Come home. Come back to Swarga. Come back to Vaikuntha. And this triggers Rishi Uddhava to go to Bhagavan Krishna because he can sense that Bhagavan is leaving. He's going home. And Rishi Uddhava asks a question which we explored way back in Srimad Bhagavatam. When Bhagavan is not present, where does dharma live? How will dharma continue when Bhagavan is not present? And that's what Shri Bhagavan Krishna is massaging into all of us that dharma is facilitated by Srimad Bhagavatam and or our Shastra. It is our scriptures like the Upanishad and Bhagavad Gita and Ramayana that we study and follow Dharma. In chapter 7, Bhagavan Krishna zooms into what is our problem with not following Dharma? And he uses the word maya, but then he specifies, he shares it's the mind. 
and he specifies more, the mind is always externalizing. If I ask everyone here, how many of you are ready to admit that you have a problem with fear? <laughs> awesome. See, I didn't even ask you. I said, if I ask you, but everyone's so open, they all have their hands up. That shows your greatness. But my point here is we tend to externalize this, that if I ask you if you have this problem, your instinct is not me, but that person does. <laughs> I never asked you if another person has a problem, but we externalize and shared in a different way. It's living in a extrovert way. Those who externalize are those who are extrovert. What does that mean? They feel that they're going to find completion outside of who they are. You know who didn't do that? Bhagavati Sita. She knew that there was no completion in Ayodhya. That's why she chose the Aranya. What to do with Maya, mind, externalization? In chapters 7 through 9, Bhagavan Krishna encourages self-development. Not so uh, societal development. It is not to refine one's car or vacation or degree. It is self-development. And specifically, when we engage in self-development, when I try to be more patient, when I try to be more vulnerable, all that I need, I get, but not from the outside. I get it from the inside. Anyone who has truly served their community, their society, the trueness of this is you don't want your name to be propagated. There's so many people who are joining us from Chinmaya Dhara right now. If I challenged all of the people at Chinmaya Dhara, and I've been serving Chinmaya Dhara for 15 years, find where my name is at Chinmaya Dhara. And the only place my name is there is a group of high school students who created this really awesome wooden carving that says Acharya Vivek. It's the wooden carving that I like. If my name wasn't there, I'd still have it there. And my point in all of this is I don't need my name to be there because I love serving the community and serving society. I get what I need from that, not from externalities. What are some of the ways we can engage in self-development? The first teacher to Rishi Dattatreya, the Avaduta, was Earth. When we have our fundraiser on April 22nd, we had mentioned it's Earth Day. And the first guru was the Earth. And our practice from this is to forgive. All we do is destroy the earth. And yet here we are. We have plenty of water and plenty of air and plenty of food to forgive. And the last teacher is the body. That was number 24. And our practice from this, sacrifice. We are so dedicated to the body when the right relationship is to be sacrificing of the body. To treat this body in a most minimalistic way, as little food, sleep, etc., that is needed. This is where we completed Vedanta and Bhagavata. And now I will flow through chapter 10 in a simple way, even though chapter 10 and 11 and 12 are potent knowledge, I'm going to share this in a simple way because I'm trying to push us forward to another lovely Gita that is going to come. And that is Hamsa Gita. We've come across many Gitas already. The Navayogi Upadesha is like a Gita, Avaduta Gita, Hamsa Gita is coming. 
Again, keeping this simple. In this chapter, Bhagavan Krishna shares with Rishi Uddhava. When one has become more virtuous, simultaneous to that, one has to become less vicious. If I have more vices, sorry, more virtues, then naturally I have to have less vices. So the first part of this chapter is Bhagavan Krishna sharing how to have less vices. Here are some of the insights that Bhagavan shares. Often what makes us extrovert is pleasure. And Bhagavan shares the pleasure that one experiences in a dream, even daydreaming. The pleasure one experiences while being awake is the same. If you can recall the last dream you had or the daydreaming you're engaged in right, right, right now, <laughs> whatever pleasure you've experienced in that dream or daydream, it came and it went. Is there any pleasure you've experienced in the waking state that came and stayed? It came and it, and it went. Yesterday, I went to see Avatar. What is it called? Avatar, thank you, <laughs> thank you. I was waiting. <laughs> when I say that, sometimes younger people come and say, Vivekji is Avatar. No, it's not Avatar. <laughs> it's Avatar. For how many of you have seen this? You may have, the new one, the new one. You may not have noticed this, but many times they recited, Asatoma Satgamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya. They didn't say it in English, sorry, in Sanskrit, but that, a message of from darkness to light, from death to life. They never shared the last part. I was listening carefully. They never shared from untruth to truth. Then it would have became too religious. <laughs> but those first two parts, darkness to light and death to life, they shared many times. And why I'm sharing this is nothing comes and stays other than light, life, truth. Another way to have less vices is when one realizes that the Atma in you is the same Atma in me and all. Okay. Share with me in the chat. If you realize that you and I are one, what vice will go away? Really, the answer is all of them, but be specific. What vice will go away if you realize you and I have the same spirit? Jealousy, 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 resentment, otherness. Yes, 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 yes. What Bhagavan Krishna points out is possessiveness. Possessiveness. When Sheila and I have to do anything at the bank, like we have to invest in our children's education, then we both have to sign on that. It's not my money, it's not her money, it's our money because they're our children. So now expand that to, if all of us have the same spirit, what do you really own? All is for all. This is like an anti-American <laughs> messaging that's coming on right now. But think of the implication. Imagine you, me, all were less possessive. Most definitely there'd be no war between Ukraine and, and Russia, correct? That would not happen between China and Taiwan and so on. Another way to have less vices is to realize there's a difference between fire and fuel. If I have a lamp right now, a dia, and then I have this paper, this fire burns this fuel. Now, the connection here is for us in internalizing this, the fire is being the seer with an R. 
consciousness, awareness, and all else is not the seer, but is the see. The see. The seer is different than the see. Okay. How many of you are wearing a watch? Can you show me your watch? Watch, watch or ring. Doesn't matter. Show me. You don't have a watch or ring? Wow. It's rare to have someone who doesn't have a watch or ring. Okay, keep it up. Um, the watch, the watch you're looking at or ring, that's the scene or the seer? Scene or seer? Any doubts about that? If you do, Bolivar classes are out, are out there. <laughs> Nobody has doubts about that, okay? Now, that's a watch. Your watch is most likely on your arm, your wrist. Your wrist, seen or seer. <laughs> Fighting is happening over here. <laughs> What's fascinating here is that the watch we treat as the scene, you can also see your wrist. If you are really intense, you can break your wrist right now too. If you are really intense. And my point is, it has the same conditions as a watch, but you feel you are your wrist. See how wise we are when it comes to external matters, but when it applies to us, we deflect. Um, Sri Ram, what are you thinking about right now? Nothing. He is enlightened. <laughs> well, why are you wearing watch? Yeah, give it to me. No possessiveness. <laughs> See, all of us know what we're thinking about right now. We're thinking about a watch, or we're thinking about lunch, or the silence retreat, or Bhagavan. You know those thoughts, which means you can't be those thoughts. One more. One more, or two more insights into how to have less vices. Bhagavan Krishna says, whatever gain you can get in heaven, the negativity that is in heaven is the same negativity that there is in the world. So now if you think of what your concept of heaven is, maybe someone's concept of heaven is no longer being a subordinate, but being a supervisor. Yes? Another person's concept of heaven is to move to an ashram. But Bhagavan Krishna is saying whatever negativity there is with being a subordinate, the same negativity happens with being a supervisor, particularly jealousy. When I thought, when I was going to the ashram, I also thought nobody's clothes get dirty there. People don't walk on the ground, they flow. <laughs> Everyone is best friends and, and sings kumbaya. <laughs> but it's almost worse in the ashram because there's no outlet. When you're angry in the, uh, in the world, what do you do? You go for a run. You buy something. You eat something. What do you do in the ashram? I used to run on the road. They told me not to. <laughs> you have no money. Uh, you get three parleji biscuits every day at 4, <laughs> 4 30. And so it's worse. There's no outlet. But what it was revealing to me is whatever I was experiencing in Niagara Falls and London, etc., was also experienced in Mumbai. And so Bhagavan is sharing here, the implication for all of us is, don't try to escape. You're not going to find the perfect context. He also shares about this thinking that I'm going to be happy tomorrow, or I'm going to be happy over there. This thinking is like agriculture. With agriculture, you do not control what grows and what doesn't grow. It's so uncertain, correct? Here is the last way that I'm sharing through this chapter on how we can be, have less vices. I'm going to read it to you in English. So long, this is Bhagavan Krishna speaking to Rishi Uddhava. So long as there is absence of freedom resulting from the perception of Dvaita, separation. Ishwara will be perceived as time, the one who consumes all, and will be a terror 
to the jiva. Some religions are based like that, correct? Our God is not God loving. We are to fear our God. And here Bhagavan Krishna is sharing, the more you live in Dvaita, the more you will have that type of relationship with Bhagavan. So the followers of the philosophy of ritualistic actions who emphasize the separation of people are bound to be obsessed with sorrow and the fear of death. Really intense. And here, you know, some people are ritualistic in a very external way. But here, a synonym to ritualistic is robotic. I may not engage in a lot of rituals. You know, I don't know the language or the procedure. But if I hate going to work every day and I go to parties when I don't even want to be in that party, then I'm living pretty robotically, correct? Their equivalent. And so Bhagavan says, such people will fear, will feel God as time and will always be afraid of death. So the point is, live more meaningfully. This is the first part of the chapter that emphasizes how to have less vices. The second part of the chapter, which I will share next week, is on how to have more virtues. And there's only one way to do that, and that is to deserve to earn a guide. To be such a sincere seeker that a sincere teacher comes into your life. Those details I'll share in our next class. Oh.